I needed four grand to buy my love a racehorse, so I put everything I had on a four-horse accumulator. And all four horses won. It was unbelievable. Gamblers take things as a sign, don't they? I knew then it just had to be. me out. Kick the door down. Shh. It's all right. I'll get in through the loft. I'll give you a hand. as a white male aged about 36 wearing a blue anorak top and blue jeans. Liverpool actor Tony Booth, well known for his role in the comedy series Till Death Us Do Part, was said to be in a serious condition today after a fire at his London home. The 48-year-old television star suffered third-degree burns during the blaze at his Hampstead flat last night. He underwent emergency treatment at the Royal Free Hospital and was later transferred to a special burns unit. No one else was hurt in the blaze. Plans have been announced to build a penthouse village on top of Manchester's old shopping centre. The exclusive yeah. well, was. Town development will include a landscape rooftop garden. Mr. Booth, wake up. You're on telly, Mr. Booth. BBC or ITV? BBC. Then I must be dying. Tony Booth's in the hospital around here, you know. Oh, yes, poor devil. You worked with him, didn't you? Oh, years ago, when we were a lot younger. He's got himself a bit of a reputation. Well, he was wonderful with me. Oh, yes? Oh, yes. Do you know, Keith, we ought to go and see him. What, well, now? Why not? He's been badly burnt. I know. Oh. I suppose he may not want to see anyone yet. Pity. Thanks, man. I'll tell Mr. Pickering you're not well. Goodbye, Ron. She's a hell of a good looking woman. A beautiful woman. Such generosity of spirit. She keeps open house. She has an open heart. There's no deceit in her. She's got a beautiful heart. Phone, Pat. Oh, who is it? Uh, Tony Booth. Hello, Tony. How are you? Where are you? Liverpool. I'm stopping at my mother's. I wonder if I could come and see you. Oh, 
Yes, yes, of course. Could we have lunch together? <laughs> Twenty odd years, and all we're doing is hanging on to each other. Can I get you a drink? Orange juice, please. Yeah, sure. Certain, thanks. How did you meet? Oh, we did a play together. We were rehearsing in uh, Manchester in 1956. I only had eyes for one player. That was Pat. Come on, mate. A girl called Sadie. Well, what's this? I've signed up for rain. Hello, Tony. Hi. I was just saying I was under the impression I was doing rain. Uh, that's right. In uh, my version, I've adapted the story. A girl called Sadie. Uh, yes, it was uh, a very successful film. I don't know if you've seen it, Tony. Sure I did. Jean Harlow. Exactly. And uh, we've been very fortunate to secure the services of another beautiful actress for our version. Hello, Pat Dean. Tony Booth. I'm playing the vicar that tries to save you. <coughs> Typecast again, eh? Would you like a cup of tea? Oh, well, I... Well, I'll get you one in a minute when I come back. Only a moustache before the fish shop closes. You know, Ma, I sometimes wonder if being a bad woman's worth it. Oh, sorry, vicar. Didn't see you there. Good morning. Good morning. Has there been a death? Yeah, I know. Has there been a death in the house? Not that I'm aware of. Then what are you doing here? I'm visiting one of the regular members of my congregation. You're here to save her, Tony, not seduce her. Perish the thought, Michael. You're not going to be too much of an awkward bugaboo. I'll be along in a minute. You have to go. They can give me five minutes after nearly 20 years. That long? <laughs> I'm wondering whether I'll be getting a clock or a canteen of cutlery. <laughs> I used to watch the street when I was at the rehab centre. Didn't I always tell you television was the future? Yes, you did. And you were right, for both of us. What are we going to do about you? I just need to get back in again. Nothing flash, just sitting at the back of the set. Why don't you come to my place for the weekend? That is, if you don't mind sharing with the five dogs, a couple of cats, and anyone else who happens to be passing. It'll make a change for you. Come. I will. Thanks. <laughs> Are you going to wear them? <laughs> well, I'd better, because they'd look daft on you. <laughs> You're not embarrassed. How do you mean? This is not a good play, right? Well, is it? It's a cheap thrills thriller. It's relying on you to wear skimpy clothes. It's going to make money out of a beautiful woman taking most of her clothes Hang off. on. Well, it's true, isn't it? You can't deny it. I know, and you're chatting me up because you admire my mind. I do. As well. <laughs> If you carry on like this, I'm going to have to start marking you out at ten. So what are you doing tonight? I'm washing my hair, and that's a five. <laughs> have you really had enough? Plenty. Oh. Are you sure? I don't eat so much these days. When I was in the hospital, they warned me if I went under six stone, I'd be dead. Oh. I'm sorry. Oh, I wish I could help you. Oh, it's, it's getting better all the time. I don't know what to say. I mean, do you want to talk about it? Well, it's hard to describe, really. When it happened, it was like... like I was watching myself. <laughs> watching myself burn, roll about, bang off the walls. It's afterwards, when the shock goes and... and little bits of you start coming back. 
and you wish they were on someone else. Oh, give us a fag. It's a great place, this. Well, thank you kindly, sir. And you always did have great taste. Oh, maybe, but I didn't have such good taste in men. <laughs> Me neither. Oh, but you were far too good at women. Uh, depends on what you're after. Oh, I always choose the wrong men. I don't know, the older I get, the harder I fall. I should be learning more sense. You're just a romantic, that's all. I know if we're talking about being a soft touch. But never again. Oh, well, we all say that, don't we? We don't mean it. Come on, let's go inside. It's getting a bit cool. It's Kalina. <laughs> Do you fancy a drink after this, you know? Not long. No, thanks. But I know a pub. An Irish pub. With music. No. <laughs> Velvet, darling. I want you, Velvet, more than anything in the world. Come to me, my darling. You are awful! <laughs> Get him out! He's horrible! <laughs> Seven. See? I'm growing on you. Why don't you come and stay here? Sorry? There's plenty of room. We wouldn't get in each other's way. Well, it's not great of me mum's. Well, she does her best. But she needs looking after herself. And I can't help. Well, that's settled then. No anky-panky mind. <laughs> You're quite safe. I'm incapable. Really? So they say. Oh, <laughs> a three, I think. Three? Don't you remember? I used to mark you out of ten. That's one of your naffish chat-up lines ever. <laughs> Cheers, Sadie. All you wish for yourself, Albert. You should be grateful to me, Sadie. I should. I changed your look for you. Look what you was when you went into the hospital. Three quid a night and commission. First move used to come from you, Albert. My God, you're as lovely as ever. And you're still as clumsy as ever. I'll do it for you. See? It's as easy as kiss me hand. By God. I... Wait for it, Albert. Son of booze! That was pathetic. It was worse than that. It was unprofessional. OK, OK, bad joke. If you do it again, I will stop the play and drag you through that damn fireplace. I'm sorry. It's time you grew up, Tony. This act of yours is getting very boring. Hiya. Hiya. How are you doing? Fine. What about you? I've got some news for you. What is it? Oh, not here. Walls have ears. Let's get something to eat. I wanted you to be the first to know. Tony Booth stayed the night last night. You always wear a good bet, Pat. He's a very special man, you know. You happy? I think we're getting there. He's got a bit of a past, hasn't he? Yes. And I'm part of it. Best thing you can do is see how you rub along together. Trust your instinct. Right. Thank you.
done, everybody. Now, Tony's going to be moving into the upstairs room as my guest, my paying guest. And in case any of those nosy bees out there are curious, he's writing a book, and that's all anybody needs to know. I know you all well enough to know you'll give him a good welcome. Where are we eating? The manzo. Sounds all right to me. Manzo, Tony. Are you meeting someone? Oh. He's sulking. <laughs> You've just missed them. They've gone. Have they? I thought you were going to the pictures. I'm changing my mind. So I see. Can I have a cigarette? Sure. Booth, what are you doing in there? Uh, hang about. Not as if I haven't seen it all before. Yeah, all right then. All right. I I've forgotten the towel. It's in here. Pat. Pat. Sorry. No, I'm sorry. I just wasn't prepared for it, that's all. Come on. Let's get you in. It was always your mind I was interested in anyway. <laughs> yeah, okay. steady as you go. Oh, I think I need an oist. Um, <laughs> it isn't too hot, is it? What? Oh! Oh, God. I'm sorry, I'm oh. sorry. Oh! Phoenix! I'd never recommend you as a geisha girl. <laughs> Where have you been? Oh, oh, I don't fancy fish today. The to London at the weekend. Oh, nice for you. For an audition. I'll be back first thing Monday. You better be. Too bitter, please. So what have I done then? You're late, aren't you? Something cropped up. Well, all the rooms have been allocated. You're in the loft. You're joking. It's all right. There's a ladder. Reception. Have I done something to upset you? I don't know what you're talking about. My round. I have, haven't I? To have a nice weekend? It was all right. Thought it must have been. Is that what all this is about? Oh, what about? The cold shoulder. I don't know what you're talking about, Tony. Mine's a G&T. I went for an audition. 
So they don't have phone boxes in London, then? I lost your number. You will use that excuse to the wrong woman one day and she'll never forgive you. What can I explain? You don't have to. It's none of my business. Come on, then. Cheers. Cheers. All the very best, man. Game. What are you trying to do? You stop messing with me, Booth, and you're dead, okay? Okay! Okay. I'm going back to London. Thought you might. Sacked me agent. Gonna find my own work in future. I'm sure you do very well. Oh, why don't you come with me? London's never worked for me. I don't seem to be able to crack it. I don't know why. So this is it then? How do you mean? That's well it lasted. I don't know about you, but I'm serious about this. But we'll be miles apart. There are trains. You think I might be worth it? For an older woman. <laughs> we don't have to go on with this tour, you know. I think I do. Give him your notice. I can't do that. There are other people involved. Who? The company. You don't owe them anything. I think I do. One for one and one for all. That's socialism, comrade. Well, pardon me. You should be ashamed of yourself. Oh, I am, I am. Good. In fact, there's only one thing I can say to them. What's that? Is that your taxi leaving for the station? I found a good butcher in Glossop. Kills his own meat. And you've got mint in the garden. I smell garlic. You sure do. Does our kitty know you're cooking with this muck? <laughs> I send him to Bingo in a taxi. Oh. oh, I say. Do you know, I could get used to this. Up yours. <laughs> Tony, get the left one. How's it going? I miss you. Why aren't you here? What's the weather like? It's peeing down. Makes my mood. Any sign of work yet? No. You'll get something. I doubt it. You will. Of course you will. Come on, Boothy. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Come up. Carlisle? Have you any idea how far away you are? I'll see you in Doncaster. I've got to go. I've no more change. I'll, I'll, I'll ring you the same time tomorrow. I love ya, despite everything. I'm drowning out here. You'll have to climb up here then. What? Come on, it's easy, young man like you. Took us 
thought you'd never ask. What are you missing about that? You've done this before, Mrs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm up for the job in the West End. Oh, great. What's it called? No time for sergeants. What's it like? I don't know. Just sending the script round. This is going to be it, Tony. This is going to be the big break for you. I know it is. Come on. Let's drink to it. It's a bit upmarket, this place. They're being nice to me. They've offered you an extension. They're going to double the money as well. You've said yes? I've not said yes. And I've not said no. Come to London. Look, if I it get this... It won't work. We'll both be out of work and miserable and start fighting. No. Things are changing. They want northern actors. There's going to be lots of work. And all these new TV channels. I've nowhere to live. You can live with me. You've got nowhere to live. Well, I'll get somewhere. I'm earning good money. You know this business. It might never happen like this again. You've got to take it when you can. It goes for life as well. To move over then. We're from the Department of Health and Social Security. We understand that you're in receipt of a widow's pension. In the name of your late husband, Mr. Alan Browning. I am, yes. Is that a problem? It might be, if we could have a chat with you about it. Go on. We understand that you are cohabiting with a Mr. Booth. I beg your pardon? Are you cohabiting with Mr. Booth? No. He is living here. Mr. Booth has use of one of the spare rooms. There's a couple of other actors staying here at the moment, too. This is gossip. Cheap gossip! He's been seen doing jobs around the house. Carrying the coal in, driving your car. Most of my men friends have driven my car from me from time to time. I take it as a courtesy, and long may they continue to do so. As for carrying buckets of coal, I should hope any man round here would offer to do it. I'm very old-fashioned that way. If there's a man around, I tend to try and make use of him. Would you say that you were living together? If you are asking if Mr. Booth and I are sleeping together, the answer is certainly not. Mr. Booth and I are Catholics and we are engaged. Good morning. Thank you for calling. <laughs> Amy Sharples would be oh. proud of you. <laughs> Don't forget to lock up before you go. I won't. Give your mother my love. I will. Have a good time. No worries. I'll phone him. You'd better. Go on, get him. I don't want to go now. It's good for the soul. Bye, love. Have a good time. I'd like to order some flowers, please. Yes, yeah, sir. Where are they going to? At uh, Cornwall. Hi, kid. Hi, uh... <laughs> hey, thanks, kid. They're lovely. You've got them, have you? Yeah. Yeah, they're beautiful. Oh. Hi. What kept you? Oh, it's a fight in the street. A fight? Who's fighting? You're not fighting. No, 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 no. No, it's two women. Nothing to do with me. <laughs> well, it better not be. How are you? I'm fine. 
I miss you. Hey, we went to Land's End today. Oh, it's so beautiful. I want to buy it. <laughs> it's magic. It's like kids' storybooks. Except when it's raining. Do you know, we have to come here together. Oh, kid. You should see it. Do you know there's artists everywhere? There's sculptors and painters and beautiful, beautiful pictures. You know, I think it must be the light. Well, it's everything. Everything. I want to show you everything. Oh, hang on, hang on. I've got some more, I've got some more. Don't go, don't go. You know that moment <laughs> that you both know, but you don't want to admit it because it would almost ruin it? Because you've both been hurt too many times and you're scared. There's that wave that comes behind you. I mean, the big one. And you know it's gonna hit you. It sweeps you up and carries you in. Come on, love. Thanks a lot. See you again. And the anticipation is wonderful. <laughs> Hi, kid. Well, I'm home. Come on in. I've got a meal ready. Oh, I know. I can smell it. It's mm, wonderful. Hey, I've missed you. I've missed you. I love you. Oh, I love you. <laughs> you think we're old enough to manage our first kiss with him collapsing into a heap, wouldn't you? Hey. <laughs> Good work. I don't believe this. It's all right for you. It's always all right for men. Anyway, they're all parts. It's not fair. I'll at least give London a try. It won't work. What won't work? What are we talking about here? How do you mean? Oh, London won't work. Work won't work. We won't work. Which is it? I'm tired. Let's go to bed. I've got to get the seven o'clock train back. I thought that you said that you won't go back till Monday. They've called us in for a technical. Bugger! Pat! Pat, wait! I should have married her first time round. Who knows everything that's happened? The one person in your life that's meant for you? Oh, I thought you were dreadful. No, you didn't. You fancied me. You were a big-headed bastard. Oh, now you tell me. You walked into that rehearsal room on the first day and you said, mm, I'm Tony Booth. Who are you? You are lovely. Oh, I've got nowhere to stay tonight. I'll stay with you. I never said that. As bloody good as. Well, you got over your avulsion pretty much, as I remember. Well, you were a young, callow youth. I took pity on you, I thought. Ooh, I could teach him a few things. Brazen hussy. <laughs> <laughs> You're coming out. Yes, Tony, I'm coming out. I know the street's been very good to me. God knows. Fabulous, fabulous years. I've been very lucky. I just don't think it's right for me anymore, that's all. I don't know whether it's me or the storylines. They're blaming Tony, of course. What's this? Some fairy tale I'm writing. It's not. It's much more than that. This is Tony you're writing about. I can't tell him how I feel about him. The words are all there, but they just won't come out. It's all here. It gets upset. People say he's another of Pat Phoenix's lame dogs and cripples. I collect them, apparently. Pat, people are vicious like that. They're jealous. They're jealous of your happiness. Oh, I am happy, you know. It makes me come alive. You know what I mean. I feel as if anything's possible. I need his strength. And I'm frightened that he's going to move on, that I'm too old or I'm too boring. He won't. He loves you. You should show him this.
Come on, here we go. Hello, Pat. Here, Pat. Come here, Pat. Pat. Yeah. Can we see the ring again, Pat? Oh, do you see the ring? Lovely, thank you. Have you named the date yet, Pat? Well, if I had, I wouldn't tell you. Uh, Where are you getting married? I haven't decided yet. Hand over here. Hello, Pat. Come here, Pat. You should be very happy. You knew that, didn't you? Pat, is the life after the street? Oh, of course there is. <laughs> I'm writing a new play for Pat, and we're taking it on tour next year. So book your seats early. Right. I'll give her a kiss for us. Go on. How about that? Oh, oh, that's it. Lovely. You got your right. Cheers. You can get rid of them now. They've had the pound of flesh. <laughs> right, gentlemen, if you don't mind, that's it. And we'll get on with the private part. Just a couple oh, more questions, you. Pat. Thank you. Thank and you. Just one. Oh, Pat, we'll be at church wedding. Thanks, girls. You look great. It's been a long, winding road, but they've got there in the end. Everything comes to them that wait. Pat, Tony, congratulations on your engagement. We wish you every happiness. Be happy. Cheers. Cheers. Look after her. I will. I know you will. Thanks, everyone. Do you know, this is the happiest day of my life. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, get on with it. Yes. He said there's a possibility I've got a spot on my lung. Well, I had TB when I was a kid. It's probably a result of that. What happens next? Hmm? What happens next? I see a specialist. When? Well, I don't know. Pat! I have waited a long time to find happiness like this. If something's bloody well going to try and spoil it. You're mad. Don't say anything to Tony. Not yet. He's got enough on his plate trying to sort himself out. I'll sort it after the tour. That's all. Yeah. I could see it draining out of you in that last act. Oh, charming. You know what I mean. I'm feeling my age, Tony, love. <sighs> you don't look a day over 70. Oh, bugger off. <laughs> I'll eat a bed for you tonight, my girl. Mm. Promises, promises. You ought to go and have a checkup. I've already made the appointment. When for? Day after tomorrow. I just came off for a fag. Well, it's a hiatus hernia. What? A hiatus bloody hernia. Pain in the bloody chest. What happens now? I get treatment. What do you think happens now? You're leaving the show. No. I don't want to hear any of that the show must go on crap. Oh, why not? It's all we've got left in the end. Let's enjoy it while we can. I mean, she lied to me. She was only trying to protect me. I mean, that's what we did for each other. You know, we stood guard. We had an equal partnership. And if Pat was carrying around this awful secret. <laughs> she even let her friend Pauline in on the act. Pauline used to come round the house, collect her, take her to work. At least that's what they told me. Oh, thanks, kid. I'm thinking of taking this up for a living. Whoa, acting. Oh. 
Come on. We throw it. I found out that Pat had to go for some tests. Mr. Booth. Oh, how do you do? I'm sorry you've had such a long wait. Well, I was hoping that no news was good news. I'm afraid not, actually. The tests have revealed that your wife, um... Is she your wife? We're living together. Oh, Miss Phoenix. The tests have indicated a cancerous growth on one of our lungs. Now, we can treat the condition. Radiation treatment at Christie's Hospital. Yeah, I know it. My sister is an outpatient there. All right. Anyway, I'll be getting in touch with her GP. And, uh, all right. No doubt we'll meet again. Sorry about this, kid. We're gonna beat it beautiful. <laughs> I know. You'll see. I believe you. I've been here before. I know you have, love. You're strong. You've got the willpower. You can fight it. I know you can. Shit, it's all in the mind, and you're stronger than I ever was. Nothing and nobody is gonna take what we've got away from us. I agree with you. Good. You still owe me a wedding, Booth. She went into Christie's Hospital for treatment. I mean, the staff were extremely kind and concerned. And after she'd finished the treatment, she told me that she'd been given a clean bill of health. She insisted on going on tour with a play that I'd written for her. No way. Show to do. Now we are going to cancel the show. That's what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to put you into the car and drive you to Manchester. You've got to see a doctor. Are you all right? No, I'm pissed off. Why, what's wrong with what they said to you? Well, he says you won't be able to go back to work until after Christmas. <laughs> <coughs> hey, they say they've got a new course of drugs. You'll beat it, kid. We can beat it, kid. <laughs> Four be the things I am wiser to know. Idleness, sorrow, a friend and a foe. Four be the things I'd been better without. Love, curiosity, freckles and doubt. Three be the things I shall never attain. Envy, content and sufficient champagne. Three be the things I shall have till I die. Laughter and hope and a sock in the eye. She's asleep. Come for a walk because I need some fresh air. She's a very brave lady. The best. She's a fighter. All her life. I better get back. You've only just got here. 
You need a break. Okay, Tony. Well, what's the verdict? When are you coming home? They say there's been a big improvement. Do you know, it's our new treatment. It seems to be having an effect. I knew it. I could tell. You're looking much better. Oh, thanks a lot. No, you know what I mean. I know. Kiss a kiss. Uh, excuse me. How is she? A great improvement today. Yeah, she does look better, doesn't she? She's going to make it. We're very hopeful, Mr. Booth. So are we. That's good. If she keeps on like this. Can I have a quiet word? Yeah, sure. Sit down, love. Let them do this to you. What? Pat's dying, Tony. Does she know? Yes. There's no more hope, Tony. You've got to get that straight. Right. She loves you. That's why she's doing it. When you go back in there, you mustn't tell her that you know. Here. Have a look at yourself. Go and have a shave and a shower, and then I'll take you in. All right. You know. Yes. I asked them not to. Now you know, I want to go out as your wife. I want to die as Mrs. Boone. Can you arrange that for me? your consent before the church. May the Lord in his goodness strengthen your consent and fill you both with his blessing. What God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Pat survived for another six days. She died 
on the 17th of September, 1986. Kiss today goodbye and point me toward tomorrow. We did what we had. Pat took a full grand horse to Newmarket, raced it against horses worth half a million and came second. But we were the real winners. We had a second chance and we took it. How many can say that? <laughs> 